Broadcasting live from the True Crime Today studios to the world. To the world. This is Murder in the Morning with Tony Bruschi and Stacy Cole. From the Hit Killers Podcast, Murder in the Morning. Oh, here's a topic that always gets me a little hmm. verklempt. Uh, um, you get really riled up. Oh, and I, when I was putting this a. story together, I thought, uh, do I want to do that to Tony? Yeah, I actually do. Here we go. After a prolonged legal battle, the fine city of Uvalde, Texas, has released a series of audio and video recordings connecting to the tragic 2022 mass shooting at Robb Elementary School. The devastating event claimed the lives of 21 individuals, including 19 students and two adults. These recordings made public following a lawsuit filed by several news outlets, including the Associated Press, CNN, and the Austin American Statesman, offer a chilling glimpse into the chaos and the fear that unfolded during this horrific event. Among hey, can I just throw something in here? Yeah. I just want to let our listeners know who've made it this far. We are not airing any of that audio. Yeah. Um, so don't worry. Yeah, you can keep listening. We're, we're not going there, okay? And for those of you playing along at home who somehow don't know about this, this is the one where there was literally about 300 police officers standing outside of the school while one one teenage gunman went and executed children and everybody stood outside watching and waiting until somebody finally broke it. And parents were trying to break through. They were arresting parents who were trying to break in through the barrier to rescue their children because these 300 fuck jacks didn't know what to do with their job. Anyway, among the communications released were 911 calls made during the shooting, capturing the desperate pleas of students and teachers trapped inside the school. One of the most heart-wrenching calls was made by a 10-year-old, Chloe Torrens, who was trapped in a classroom where the gunman, 18-year-old Salvador, I don't know to fucking say his name, had opened fire. Yeah. The human Upstate. being who should be burnt, just, just fucking throw him to the shark. They killed him, didn't they? Didn't they shoot him, or he shot himself I, I or some so. shit? I think so. I mean, in my yeah. opinion, the family should go with him. Uh, please, I don't want to die, the kid said. My teacher is dead. Oh, my God. This is a 10-year-old. Again, as around 300 Uvalde police officers and others stood outside. Oh, and, and they get pissed off when you go to their uh, school board meetings and call them out on their shit. They kick you out. They're that type of town. This is a town where everyone should just fucking leave. <laughs> just let it right. burn. Uh, describing the scene around her with a trembling voice, a lot of people are gone, she added, referring to the many victims who had already succumbed to the gunman's bullets. I'm so, my God, I get so angry about this. Like, I'm sorry if you were a fucking officer there and you did not go in. Shame on you. Shame on you. I mean, there's far worse I'd like to say, quite honestly, of like, I won't. I've said it before and we've had to edit it out. Because yeah, we have, like, we'll finish recording. I'm like, Tony, we can't. We Tony, can't you can't that. encourage people to end their own lives. Yeah, like, that's yeah. not cool, dude. I shouldn't. Even though that. I feel it. Even though I feel it, I shouldn't say it. The recordings also revealed the chaos and confusion among law enforcement as they attempted to respond to the crisis. The police responded, including nearly 150 U.S. Border Patrol agents, 91 state police officials, as well as school and city police. God. I just don't get it. How can you fuck things up this much? I We've, um, where I live, we had a mass shooting um, eight, seven years ago. Uh, it was an EMT at the time. I was not on duty. Um, at a school? No, not at a school. It was um, some guy during a divorce decided to go off on his attorney oh, and God. just took out some people. I, it, mass shooting for... Oh, that was at the was, insurance place, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I think it was an insurance place, yeah. a law firm, a bank. Yeah. He, he just kept going from location to location. She worked at a bank, his yeah. ex-wife. So he went after her there, took out some people, um, went through a subway um, sandwich shop. I mean, it just it, and then took out a cop. Yeah. Um, the police response where I live in a smallish town in Wisconsin was far better in that situation than what we're seeing with Uvalde. And there's probably 20, 30 officers, maybe 40. I don't know what the number was, but far fewer. Well, and their response was what? was better. Here's the deal. It's not like they didn't show up and quickly. 
They just didn't they do there. anything. They just didn't do anything. That's the yeah. part that makes no sense. It's other than like it's overkill to have 150 border patrol agents and 91 state police officers at an event like this. It really is. That's too many fucking people. But they even with too many people, they couldn't yeah. get their shit together. I, again, so many things I'd love to say. But you can't encourage people to do that to themselves in the shame nope. and the absolute patheticness that they will hold with them for the rest of their life of being an absolute piece of shit human being for doing absolutely nothing. Well, and you heard, too, what, what's his name, Redondo or something, the police chief that, that he was whining in the media about how he's the scapegoat for this. Yeah, you were in charge. You were in charge. And I hope to God that someday you find something to. OK, I'm not going to go there. I'm not Don't gonna go, there. go there. We're all thinking it. But, <sighs> you know, it's it's like when like I'm a huge Minnesota Viking fan and my team sucks. Yeah. OK, we've had some great seasons. But at the end of the day, when the season's over and we have not gone to the Super Bowl again, still, ever, everybody turns and looks at the coach. Ultimately, it's the coach. It's the defensive coordinator. It's the offensive coordinator. It's the ones in charge who are in charge of how the team does when it yeah. fucking matters. And that's what that day looked like. He was in charge. He uh had the master plan. He was telling people what to do or and not. He was not qualified or <laughs> not telling people what to do. That happened to, I just hope we find him someday in a, uh, 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 yep. Okay. I'll stop. I'll stop. I love you, Tony. Don't do it. <sighs> Despite the overwhelming presence of law enforcement, the response was slow and disorganized with dozens of officers standing in the hallway. Remember, this is the one where they also, got uh, Purell. They used some Purell on their hands as they heard gunshots down the road and children being executed. That's the part that astounded me watching the video. I'm like, so you're worried about COVID, but you're not worried about the kids dying from a gunshot. When they find you in the swamp, but I'm okay. I won't. Uh... That... Do I need to come over there and hit stop? I'm not going to. I will. I, I, yeah. Meanwhile, terrified students and teachers continue to make desperate 911 calls begging for help as the gunman continued his deadly rampage. I think they should force these officers to sit there and listen to the shit every fucking yes. day. Every day. Come out and it's the morning. It's the morning. You come in here. We're going to sit you down and you get to listen to these calls every fucking day. And then you get to be beat to death by parents of these children. We're going to yeah. give them, we're going to fucking Negan's bat from, uh, okay. The gunman, Salvador Ramos, entered Robb Elementary School. I tell you what, if I was one of those fucking parents, I'd have Negan's bat. At 11.33 a.m., first finding shots or first firing shots in the hallway before entering two adjourning fourth grade classrooms. The first officers arrived minutes later, but they retreated after Ramos opened fire on them. You know, like officers do. You retreat when they're killing kids and you have weapons. Let the kids handle it. You fucking pieces of shit. Yeah. Leaving the children and teachers inside to fend for themselves. Negan's bat sounds like an appropriate way to end them. I really. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that. Can you enlighten me? Oh, yes. It's on The Walking Dead. It's the bat that is uh, has uh, nails uh, all through it. So when you swing, it gets oh. stuck and you got to oh. peel it out. Oh. I think it will be fine for some of these folks who let children be murdered in front of them when they had weapons and ran away from the teenager gunman. Oh. I, I just feel, I don't know. I, I think if you go through this and you did that shit and you let, you're just as fucking guilty as the shooter. You enabled the shooter. You are, you are one of the shooters, in my opinion. You are an absolute disgrace to humanity. Oh. If you're one of those officers and you're listening to this. Please, just... Go, okay, I can't encourage it. 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 <sighs> As the minutes ticked by, the Uvalde Police Department radio traffic remained focused on setting up a perimeter around the school, controlling traffic and managing the crowd of desperate parents who gathered outside, pleading for officers to go in and save their children. At 12.06 p.m., the chaos was still palpable as officers struggled to establish a command post with one officer lamenting that they lack the manpower to both manage the perimeter and deal with the situation inside. They're trying to push because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. 
They're trying to push in, what officer said, referring to the frantic parents outside. Yes, and he t- if I had been a, if I had been a fucking parent and I had been armed, I would have shot a fucking officer if I needed to to get into that fucking building. Well, I would have. They shot- would have killed you. They would have killed you. They you'd either be I dead or arrested. I would have been shooting anyone in my way. Yeah. There would have been bullets in people if they were in the way of me trying to get into my kid. I don't give a fuck who you are. Yeah. If you're not going to do it, I will. By 12. That's what what the parents were screaming. Like my kid is in there and you're not doing anything. I would have fucking killed them. I would, I'd be dead because I would have like gone for a weapon and probably gotten shot. Yep. You, you would absolutely be dead. And but I would have done dad. You would have been in jail, but I would have done it. If I was a parent standing there, I would have, if nobody's going to fucking do anything, and they're not like, I'll take your fucking weapon. I'll try and get it from your holster. If I, if, if in that situation, there is no better thing to do than that. And go ahead, shoot a parent outside. That'll look even better than you idiots not going in while these children are being executed. And you're well, pathetic. And the teachers, the teachers, and the teachers were calling and, and giving. Yeah. It wasn't just a kid calling saying that it was the teachers. Like, my God, help yeah. us. And your pathetic city still sits there and, and doesn't let people talk at, at school board meetings about security and shit. You all should fucking die. Okay, I'm sorry. I shouldn't. I'm not encouraging that. I'm not. I'm not uh, asking for that. I'm just expressing an opinion that there's no place for you here anymore. A SWAT team uh, from Austin, located 162 miles away, was en route to the scene. <laughs> really? You had yeah. there's already 300 people here. Why are we calling in them? But local police still struggle to provide coherent information about the situation inside the school. It wasn't until 12.50 p.m., nearly 80 minutes after Ramos began his attack, that a tactical team finally entered the classrooms and fatally shot him. The delayed response has been heavily criticized in multiple reports. Yeah, obviously. Including the U.S. Justice Department review that highlighted the lack of urgency in establishing a command center, which led to confusion among officers who were in charge. The report, along with other federal and state investigations, pointed to Cascading failures in law enforcement training, communication, leadership, and technology. Some reports even questioned whether officers had prioritized their own safety over that of the children and the teachers trapped inside, which they clearly fucking did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Adding to the tragedy, Ramos had shot and wounded his grandmother before driving to the school where he carried out his attack. His uncle, Armando Ramos, made several frantic 911 calls begging to be connected to his nephew in hopes of talking him down. Everything I tell him he does, listen to me, Armando said, his voice cracking. Maybe he could stand down or do something to turn himself in. His desperate pleas, however, came too late. By the time he made contact, the shooting had already ended, and Salvador Ramos has been killed by law enforcement. If you think about it, the grandfather, or the uncle, I'm sorry, it was, was it the uncle? Yeah, uncle was more brave than some of these officers. Yes. In the aftermath, two officers involved in the response have faced criminal charges. Former Uvalde School Police Chief Pete uh, Arredondo. Arredondo. He's the one who was saying he's the scapegoat. He should be put to death. <laughs> Tony. Tony. He should. Tony. He should face the death penalty. I'm serious. Try him in fucking court. And yes, I'm sorry. You are just, you did shit. You allowed these people to die. Yes, I'm sorry. There's no place for you here anymore. You allowed this to happen. Your failure caused this to happen. You should face the death penalty just as any other criminal does. Because in my mind, you're a fucking criminal. I, I wholeheartedly agree with the charges of aband- child abandonment and endangerment. I mean, there are parents who have done far less that have received harsher um, sentences and, and you know convictions. Yeah. Um, yeah. What they did was just absolutely derelict of duty in any other situation if 19 people die in front of you and it's your responsibility to protect them what wouldn't you be held criminally responsible but because Mm -hmm. he's he's an officer it's not it doesn't make any sense to me no like he should be even more responsible for this shit well, especially they knew what was going on. It would be one thing if they didn't have, you know, if, if this were a, a place where cell phones weren't allowed and nobody had made a 911 call, maybe somebody was like, something's going on in there and they didn't know. I can understand. It's not that. No, it's not that. They absolutely knew. And more officers were piling in 150 U.S. Border Patrol, 91 state police officers. For fuck's sake, that's the <sighs> entire city. It really is. I mean, it's insane, that amount of security. 
that we saw at this and, and nothing done. So, yeah, I, 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 I'm not saying, you know, go burn him at the stake. I'm saying he should be tried in court, and I think the death penalty should be an option. That's my opinion. I really think it should be. I don't think that's an, un, an unreasonable response to the massive failure on his part. Yeah. I just, I don't, I don't see why it wouldn't be. I, I don't. You fail that badly, and this many people die. I'm sorry. You have to pay the consequences. And if that's you and your life, then so be it. Uh, you clearly have failed so many people now in your life that, uh, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I, I don't know what justice is here. I fucking hate this story because it gets me so pissed off because it's so obviously something that could have been prevented. And, and that's the thing. And just it, somebody stepping up and doing more than they did could have saved some lives. We wouldn't be talking about 19 dead people. No. 20, yeah, 21 individuals died. Hopefully it would have been half that. It should have been none. You had that many fucking people there before he... God, it should have... Yeah, I'm just... And the fact that this man is even walking free is a fucking insane to me. It, it's just, I'm sorry. This is your responsibility. You fucked it up that bad. You pay the consequences you're in the thick of a true crime saga every detail sinking in and then wham a commercial about something you couldn't care less about it's like being served a microwaved dinner at a five-star restaurant but it doesn't have to be this way go for true crime today premium plus on apple podcasts with True Crime Today Premium Plus, you get uninterrupted, ad-free episodes, extended interviews that dig even deeper into the muck, and early access so you can brag to your friends. It's like ordering the secret menu at a crime buffet. So, search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts, subscribe, and savor every twisted detail without interruption.